I should be live. So, yeah, this is such a powerful time before Rosh Hashanah. And on Sunday, I was walking with my kid in Santa Monica, and it was so wild because I see this woman, sorry, I'm just doing a couple of things on the back end. I see this woman, you know, coming towards us and she's like wearing tattered clothing. She's not even looking up. She's just, she's looking down. You don't see her face. She's pushing one of these walkers that has, you know, the four legs. And she actually has a pillow that she's dragging with one of her feet. And it almost felt like performance art. It was so sad but it was also so intense, it almost felt like an Andy Kaufman moment or something, but it wasn't. So, you know, I just felt really bad and we just kept walking. Um, my son's six, we were actually trying to find an ice cream place. Um, and I ended up Googling and then we went back like a couple blocks to I guess where she was. We walked to the ice cream store and it turns out she's sitting there and she had ordered ice cream, she's sitting there eating. So I'm like, okay, you know, when you see these people who you think like can't really function in the world and then they're doing exactly what you're gonna do, it's just kind of like an interesting moment. We walk in, anyway, when I come out, I'm like eating, you know, we're both eating, we're like snuggling and just eating ice cream and just like enjoying the moment. And she looks at me and she goes, um, do you know where I could get a machzor, which is the prayer book that we have for Rosh Hashanah for the Jewish New Year? And I say, well, probably a Chabad. Um, and she says, you know, I don't have a car. And I said, Chabad's like Starbucks. There's one every few blocks, like if you're in a city with Jewish people. Um, so I Googled it and it turns out a few blocks away there was actually a Chabad. Um, so I ran in and, you know, borrowed a pen from the, from the place and wrote down the address. Um, she was so thankful. And then she tells me with uh, Rosh Hashanah coming and, you know, it's just this time of renewal and you know, it says in Breshi, which we start reading shortly after, a couple weeks after, um, Vayihi Or, and there will be light, there shall be light. Not that there was light or God created light. Um, you know, and she says, there's, there's always going to be darkness, there's always going to be these dark moments. But, you know, with this verse, we remember there will also be light, there will also be hope. And it was just this powerful, sort of humbling moment, just a reminder to never judge always be compassionate and just realize that inspiration and wisdom can come from anywhere. So this festival, the Light of Infinite and this Light of Infinite series, this one being the Genesis of Light uh, in a couple months will be the Exodus of Darkness paralleling Shemot Exodus. Um, it's inspired by, unfortunately, when my mom passed and my ex-wife's mother passed um, when her mom passed, I actually wrote my first Dvar Torah. I never thought I could write a Dvar Torah. Um, and then, unfortunately, not that long after, when my mom passed, you know, I, at that point, I was like, okay, I, I need to keep doing this. I want to do, every week, I want to write something until we complete the full cycle. Throughout the year, we read the Torah in its entirety. And... So this would be, you know, I was writing every chapter and at the end of the year I had what I didn't realize, but it was actually a five book series and I spent the next year perfecting it all. And it came out today actually. Barnes Noble, Target, Walmart, um, and Amazon Prime is probably the best bet. And of course you could also get it on the website that you're viewing right now, lightofinfinite.com. Some of this is in the book, some of it's not. Um, but when my mom passed actually two weeks prior to that, I was in Maryland where she lives or where she lived and my sister lives. And first of all, Neshamat uh, Aliyah for my mother, her Hebrew name is Frida Livona Bat Shalom. And for my kids, Bubby, Yehudas Chava Bat Yaakov Dov. So I wrote this poem. I couldn't read it to my mom because it was too telling of what was happening and that she was gonna pass. Um, but I wrote it two weeks prior and I'll share it now. A love untainted, I expected nothing. Given everything, nursed into existence, I followed you around the world, every bit of art inspired by your family, exiled for thousands of years, eyes on the Holy Land, showed me about your love in my little hand. I'm crying as I realize soon I can't reach out, at least not in this world, but the bits you left, I'll pick them up till there's nothing left. Put it in my art, set it free, now it's you and me, and the person who sees, feels, knows that it's real. 
And I read this to her, it's hard to not, um, you know, cry right now, but I read this to her. I had, I ran back actually, you know, I live in LA and she was in Maryland. My sister called and she's like this, you know, she should have passed already a couple of days ago. You need to get on a flight. Hopefully she'll hold on. And, and she was clearly just holding on for that. I mean, she wasn't responsive for a while and uh, not eating, drinking or anything like that. And I call, I was freaking out. I called Idan Reichel and I was like, look, you're my, you're mine and my mom's favorite artist. If you could send a video, I don't know if I'm gonna make it in time. If you could maybe send a video, like Ares is on his way or something like this. Within minutes, I don't even know how it worked mathematically because the video was longer than the amount of time, but basically I get this video that he sends me and he's playing piano and he says, Frida, my mom's name. Ares is on his way, sending you love from Israel, you know, in this like accent. I just love him so much, he's such an angel. And he's playing the piano and he plays me Mama Keem, one of our favorite songs. And at the end sends, you know, well wishes again. And my uncle had played it that night. My mom completely unresponsive. And at that moment when he played it, she squeezed his hand and he tells me this was like the only sign of life that has happened. And it was amazing. And then I hit Shlomo Gason, who's my, my little brother also, his family's from Maryland. Um, he also composed a song on the spot and it was just so beautiful. And when I went there, you know, I'm sitting by her bedside reading to Hillam. I'm reading her this poem because I couldn't read it before. And then I played her this Idan Reichel video and this video um, from Zusha. And it just, it was, you know, it just meant so much. Like there's so much love and light in the world. And even through tragedy, like people feel that and they want to, help and they want to show love and they want to bring something positive, something meaningful in those moments. And that's really the inspiration of this book and just me putting it out into the world. And besides it mirroring the Parshiot, the chapters of the Torah, the Torah portions that we read, half of the book is also kind of the stories about them, my own journey, and then there's like 40 pages, key Kabbalistic concepts, uh, and then another section largely inspired by Rabbi Nachman called How to Exist in Love, Tending to the Spirit. And there's just some epic lessons in there. Uh, so hopefully you check it out. I'm gonna read a couple other poems. This is actually a poem. So at the end of every book, I have a poem. Sometimes it's upside down if you get the hard cover and starting from the back and then on the soft cover, it's right side up. Um, this poem is from the next book, The Exodus of Darkness. Clarity clouded the abstract where my dreams lie. A sky of sun, but darkness seen. Doubt is an illusion, an art form, formed of faithlessness. Align with yourself, your godly soul. So it's just a short little vignette, I guess. Um, so that's gonna be the next book, which actually comes out in November and there'll be another festival at that point. So hopefully you'll tune in and check that out. This one is called Kabbalah of She. I've aligned with the lines of the universe. Drew circles around perception, pushing past the constant blast of concealment. The godly soul found within. I found her out of sin, a sun that shined clarity on the abstract. One turn back and I was and will be godly as she. This one is called, well, it doesn't have a title, but it's about Klippah, sort of the shell, the shell that hides godliness in all the elements of the world. This shell covering your magic, if you can only see what I see, full of life that can't survive up here, the inside of you under layers of fear, a fishbowl, a figment, one in your mind, peel, push, feel, rush inward, your outside is created, dig deeper to being a creation, sweet and pure as a fruit, but your shell has toughened, peel it all away until you see it was all a trick you played. This next one, I guess it's called Olam. I mean, these aren't really titled. This is gonna be in a book, one of my forthcoming books called The Kabbalah, or maybe The Poetry of Kabbalah. I don't have a title, but it's Kabbalistic Poetry. The world is full of enough dissonance. Produce melody, perform alchemy. Sift the good notes from the bad, the serene from the siren song. Step in rhythm, grow in concert. We are all notes in this divine orchestra of existence. And here's another one. Amazing how a day dreams from night through might 
Light brings darkness, dependent on its contrast. First love, last to last, but closer to you, being the only answer to a question. You've only been guessing. Inward lies the truth. Oh, so this one actually, I'll tell you a little bit of background. This one is about giving, and it's also for a, another book that I might be working on. Maybe I won't reveal the title, but the idea of it, this is from Avram Lowenthal, who I haven't met, but he sent me this from Tzfat, and it has the upper and lower hay of Hashem's name. So the upper one is full, and it's actually interesting because the Altar Rebbe in Bechu Kotai talks about Chakika, you know, basically he says, you know, when something's attached or when something is one, so here it's engraved actually, so it's interesting that it ties to this epic lesson from the Altar Rebbe, but, you know, you can't separate this. It's actually like one with the object, you know, so that's a whole different level than, you know, if you're writing, I mean, you could technically, there's certain things you could pull away and then there's certain things that are embedded with the object. So, you know, the idea of dvekut, of clinging to Hashem, clinging to the infinite, to the one, so that we can be present and be full of happiness and at peace, peace being the vessel where blessings come in. So the idea with this is, this is a state that we're completely connected and it's also full. So the letter hay, the upper hay is full here, but the lower one you'll see is hollow. And what this represents is when we get onto this upper level, then we're in a state, this upper level represents only giving. There's no need to receive. If you could stay in a state of giving, that's actually, you're creating a vessel for receiving. But this is the, that state, sort of the godly state, the godly consciousness, just giving. And this lower one is the one that we're in, that we often have to struggle with, where our inclination and our default is to like want to take and not to give, and we have to fight that. And if you see, if you're in that state, then in a sense, there's a hollowness in that state. So we have to push past that. And this is something sort of tied to that. Don't trip on the finite minutia. Don't take ad nauseum. Just give, love, live. The world is infinite and gives to the giving, loves the truly living, shines light on the ones who create space for it. So it's a short one, but it's basically talking about that state. I think I'll read a couple other little sort of lines from this book series, and then I'm probably gonna have to make sure everybody is good for the next bunch of festival performance sessions because every half hour is a new person. Thanks so much for tuning in. God is concealed and revealed within love. We have to remove our layers of ego and negativity to get to the root of our being and purpose. When we elevate our soul above our body, aligning our physical selves to our spiritual selves, we can transform our natural space into a supernatural setting. Existing in a space of love comes from judging oneself and others favorably. To pledge love and faith without action is the beginning of a desire for a thing, but it is not a unification with that thing. We need to stop looking towards others to fulfill that feeling that only we can truly give ourselves. And we need to shift our mindset from being competitors to being collaborators in life's journey. Just as God sustains and recreates the world at every moment, we too can recreate our own journeys and our own reality from moment to moment. And at any moment, we can turn it all around. Exile is a state of disconnect. Redemption is the rectification of that state. Happiness is healthily navigating the ascents and descents of life. A feeling of richness and happiness comes from focusing on the positives and celebrating the moment. Faith fuels the future. Fear stirs the past. We need to fuel ourselves with faith. Pride stunts growth while humility and love nurture it. We need to constantly meditate on our true being and not the stories we tell ourselves or the ones that we view from how other people view us. Being truly present is essential for being at peace. We have infinite possibilities at every moment. Why limit ourselves to focusing on one that may bring us down? We cannot make healthy decisions if they're from a space of hatred or anger. Greet all hate with love and see how your life changes. When we focus on ourselves and our own needs at the detriment of others, we become a detriment to ourselves. Focusing on what you can give instead of what you can take, you turn yourself into a vessel for receiving. 
Eliminating doubt brings the expansion of an ever-broadening spiritual reality. God has hidden himself in the universe so that our actions are of our own free will. But when we create space for the divine, we can peel back a bit of the concealment and see the divine guiding and blessing us. We are all beautiful vessels. We simply need to fill our vessels with positivity. Shifting our perspective to the positive draws down and attracts blessing. And peace is the vessel that contains every blessing. Thank you so much for all of your support of this. Tuning in, following The Light of Infinite on Instagram, lightofinfinite.com, the website, and of course, getting this book, hopefully, which came out today at Barnes & Noble and Amazon Prime. You can get it there. Light of the Infinite, The Genesis of the Light. This is book one, Bray Sheet. Book two will come out in just a couple months, and every couple months, the next book will come out. Thank you so much. So much love. Have the most beautiful new year and a great week. <laughs>